Lindsey Graham has been a national figure in politics for decades, emerging as a Republican senator and holding the same South Carolina seat since 2003. From his time raising his younger sister to his controversial military career, here's how he rose to power. Lindsey Graham's beginnings were humble. His parents owned a South Carolina bar and restaurant called the Sanitary Cafe, where they also lived for a time. Graham encountered grief as a young man when he became an orphan. As he wrote in his autobiography, My Story, Graham was at college, the first in his family to go, when his mother died of Hodgkin's lymphoma. She was unable to see him graduate, as had been her dying wish. Not long after his mother's death, Graham's 13-year-old sister Darlene discovered their father dead from a fatal heart attack. The senator wrote, We had been close before our parents died. Their loss brought us even closer. His sister agreed, telling the New York Times in 2015, Lindsay was always my parent. There was no doubt in my mind or anyone else's mind that Lindsay was my guardian. While Graham was struggling to keep his family together, he had held on to his dream of working for the United States Air Force. As he wrote in My Story, they had accommodated his difficult circumstances, and once he had his law school degree, Graham joined the Judge Advocate General Corps. His military career has caused confusion over the years, as the politician has been accused of lying about being a veteran who served in active duty, rather than the Air Force lawyer he actually was. Graham described himself as an Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm veteran on his official website in 1998, leading to an article by The Hill that debunked the claim. Graham told The Hill he has always been straightforward about his military service, saying, I have not told anybody I'm a combatant. I'm not a war hero and never said I was. I never intended to lie. If I have lied about my military record, I'm not fit to serve in Congress. And while his official biography claimed that he was the senior instructor at an Alabama Air Force base, the Washington Post reported in 2015 that Graham never actually held that title. The newspaper also raised questions over how many hours he actually served. Although Lindsey Graham has reached the House of Representatives, he first emerged into the limelight when Bill Clinton's presidency began to implode. According to CBS, he was heavily involved in the trial process as one of the House impeachment managers, a role which required him to present the legal case against Clinton. Graham did show his moderate side by voting against one of the perjury articles and questioning how the scandal was treated. He was quoted in the Washington Post as asking a room full of politicians, is this Watergate or Peyton place. A video of him discussing the impeachment resurfaced in 2020, and it showed Graham arguing that Clinton should be removed. In the video, Graham argued that abuse of power should be a reason for impeachment, saying, What's a high crime? How about an important person hurt somebody of low means? That's not very scholarly, but I think it's the truth. I think that's what they meant by high crimes. Doesn't even have to be a crime. It's just when you start using your office and you're acting in a way that hurts people you've committed a higher crime. Throughout his career, Lindsey Graham was a loyal ally to John McCain. When Donald Trump came into power, however, that relationship changed. As the New York Magazine reported, their friendship began after Bill Clinton's impeachment trial, when McCain invited Graham to his family ranch in Sedona. Fellow Republican Senator Steve Largent said Graham was dazzled by McCain's influence and honored to be a guest at their 4th of July celebrations. They worked together on policies like immigration reform and became close friends. John, uh, to me, uh, has one quality that is really special. He will fight for his friends. Graham has been criticized, however, for ignoring Trump's comments about McCain. Trump, speaking at a meeting in Iowa in 2015, insulted the former Navy pilot's experience as a prisoner of war, saying that McCain was only called a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. Although McCain never forgave those comments, Graham was willing to befriend the president. He even sided with Trump against his old ally during a 2018 vote over Obamacare. And although Graham gave an emotional tribute when McCain died from brain cancer in 2018, he still raised a few eyebrows by arranging for Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump to attend the funeral. If there's one area of politics that Graham is infamous for, it's foreign policy. The Republican has urged presidents to keep troops in the Middle East and condemned attempts to shut down Guantanamo Bay, recommending aggressive approaches almost every time. As Graham told The Atlantic, his advice to Donald Trump was that the American military should stay in Afghanistan. He reportedly told the president, now, if you're willing to leave them in there, I'll stand behind you. If you're willing to stay the course in Afghanistan, I'll give you all the protection I can. 
He also argued that if 13,000 troops were pulled out, then ISIS would return at the border, saying, See what happens when everything we worked for collapses because you wanted to leave. An unnamed friend told Intelligencer, You can go across the board on the foreign policy front, and Graham has his fingerprints on everything. The one thing I can tell any senator, travel. If you care about national security, there's no substitute for being on the ground. Over the course of his career, Graham went from the House of Representatives to the Senate, and he was supported by his fellow South Carolina politician Strom Thurmond. The notorious pro-segregation senator gave Graham his endorsement in the 2002 race for Thurmond's former seat. Graham won, officially succeeding him. When Thurmond died, Graham wrote, South Carolina has lost its favorite son, Strom Thurmond, a great American patriot, statesman, and close friend to many. He also claimed that Thurmond, quote, served his country in every conceivable way, as a World War II soldier and as the longest-serving senator in the country. Graham has kept the South Carolina seat ever since, although he faced tough opposition from Jamie Harrison in 2021. The Democrat broke records by raising $109 million for his campaign. At the time, Harrison reflected on his identity as a black politician in the South, telling The Guardian, the seat that I'm vying for also is a seat that has its own history. This is the seat of John C. Calhoun, of Strom Thurmond, of a man called Ben Tillman who talked about lynching black folks on the U.S. Senate. Although Graham has secured plenty of allies over the years, he's also made some enemies in his own party. Graham upset the far-right conservatives in South Carolina when he started arguing that the GOP needed to be more inclusive and work together with Democrats. According to Politico, he was criticized for compromising on climate change and helping to open the debate about gun restrictions in the run-up to the mid-elections of 2014. The senator argued, What I want is a party that can grow. If we're going to build the party around universal agreement, we become a club. He won against more extreme candidates, calling it, quote, more fun than any time I've been in politics in an interview with The Atlantic. He added, I'm trying to tell the Tea Party, I understand your frustration, but being frustrated is not enough. I know Washington is broken, but what's broken about it is everybody yelling and nobody trying to fix it. I'm trying. Lindsey Graham and Donald Trump's relationship has gone through quite a transformation over the years, sparking accusations of hypocrisy. The South Carolina senator had loudly criticized Trump during the run-up to his election in 2016, making sure that there was no love lost between the two. He's a race-baiting, xenophobic, religious bigot. Trump also once called Graham, quote, one of the dumbest human beings I've ever seen, claiming that the politician was a nut job. Once Trump had won the presidency, however, their animosity seemed to come to an end. Graham told the New York Times that he began to befriend Trump after meeting him to discuss foreign policy, saying, where it all changed is when we went for golf. His newfound loyalty got him in trouble in 2020, when the Washington Post revealed that he had rung election officials in Georgia, allegedly asking them how they could affect the ballot counting process. The call was investigated as part of a probe into the presidential election and how Trump spread misinformation. Graham's love life has raised eyebrows since he emerged in the public eye. If he had won the presidential election in 2016, the senator would have only been the third bachelor to ever reach the White House. In a phone call with The Herald, Graham claimed that his only brush with marriage happened in his late 20s when he considered proposing to a flight attendant who he met and dated in Germany. It didn't work out, but as he told Politico, Graham's young life was mostly spent taking care of his sister anyway. Discussing whether Darlene would fulfill the role of first lady, Graham said, She's played a big role in my life. She's my number one fan. Of all the things I'm proud of, how she turned out, I'm proud of the most. I think most people are not worried about my marital status as much as what can I do for their family. Lindsey Graham shocked the world in 2015 by revealing how much of a technophobe he was. While discussing Hillary Clinton's leaked emails with NBC's Meet the Press, Graham denied even sending an email himself, saying, I don't email. No, you can have every email I've ever sent. I've never sent one. Graham also notoriously only used flip phones for years, until Donald Trump gave out his number to supporters during a tirade about the South Carolina senator in 2015. I don't know if it's the right number, let's try it, 202. <laughs> Graham told Politico at the time that he would probably have to change phones because he was getting so many calls, saying, When it comes to the Donald, nothing surprises me anymore. It's just too bad, really. Anyone in charge of defending the Capitol
In a video by Independent Journal Review, Graham made fun of the feud between himself and Trump by smashing a series of flip phones, similar to the phone that got doxxed. Or if all else fails, you can always give your number to the Donald. This is for all the veterans. In 2015, Graham expressed that his views on Caitlyn Jenner differed from some other members of the Republican Party, clarifying that he was, quote, into addition. Speaking to CNN's State of the Union, Graham said he'd be happy to welcome Jenner as an ally, saying, I'm a pro-life, traditional marriage kind of guy, but I'm running to be president of the United States. If Caitlyn Jenner wants to be a Republican, she is welcome in my party. Graham continued by expressing his sympathy towards Jenner's experiences as a transgender woman saying, I haven't walked in her shoes. I don't have all the answers to the mysteries of life. I can only imagine the torment that Bruce Jenner went through. I hope, he's, I hope she has found peace. In 2021, Jenner announced that she was running for governor of California, and she has been open about her Republican politics over the years. Jenner told students at the University of Pennsylvania in 2016, I have gotten more flack for being a conservative Republican than I have for being trans. Lindsey Graham may be double vaccinated, but that hasn't stopped him from catching COVID-19. He tweeted about it, writing, I was just informed by the House physician I have tested positive for COVID-19, even after being vaccinated. He added that he was experiencing flu-like symptoms. After going to the doctor, it was confirmed that he had a breakthrough case of the virus, making him the first senator and the second member of Congress to test positive against the odds. Graham still advocated for vaccines, explaining that his symptoms would likely be worse if he hadn't received his jab. In an interview with AP News, Graham claimed that he had recently urged Donald Trump to encourage his supporters to get the jab, saying, no one's being asked to go off to fight radical Islam or fight a foreign enemy. We're being asked to make responsible medical decisions. Take the vaccine. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nikki Swift videos about the latest hot topics are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.